Hello, hello there, and welcome back to War Thunder. Today, I want to present you the two aircraft that were introduced in this patch, in patch 1.81. This is, of course, the German ME163B0 and, of course, the Russian I-225. Now, both aircraft I really like the look of, but both of them share various different problems and there were a disappointment both at first, despite actually good performance. What killed both planes for me, initially, was the gun performance and that was just simply nothing that I um, expected, especially after that uh, buff last patch. But I think, especially with the Russian 20mm, the Schwas, or however they are pronounced, um, you have four of them, 400 rounds, but you run through the ammunition very, very quickly. The plane itself has a frantic acceleration. It has a good climb rate. The engine doesn't actually make you that many problems in terms of overheat. The roll rate is bad, though. And um, yeah, the problem is it doesn't really matter whichever belt I tried out. Um, let's have a quick look at it. I think I used the default belts, the universal belts, the ground targets, tracers, armor targets and stealth belts. They did just simply no damage, not even. When I used the armor targets and I got a good burst into a Spitfire right at the cockpit with no packet loss and very low ping. And the damage was nil. There was just nothing. No smoke trial, no lack in performance. I hit other planes in the wing area and they just didn't lean to one side. They just did no damage whatsoever. And so I'm really jealous about the American 20mm and what I thought the German 20mm. And whenever I got hit with the Hispanos or the Aiden cannons or anything like this, I just vaporized with the first shot it was really really disappointing and so i think i have maybe one clip there for you against the b29 where i used the tracer belts with the full high explosive and and it just pumped so much into this plane and nothing got out of it so here I approached the B-29 frontally, I dip a bit below to actually go out of the firing arcs of the frontal quadruple turret. I aim for the tail and I just got a critical, but that's meaningless. But then a single 23mm hit from a LA-9 sealed the deal for him. That's punishing. So that brings me then to the plane that I had actually a surprisingly good battle just as of right now. And this is the German ME-163B0. A few words. And uh, that is at first a look into the tech tree. I would suggest at Gaijin that we should put the German ME163s and keep them in the folder, but just put them between the ME262C2B and the CL13. It would just make more sense because there are no chats. They teach you nothing. And from a battle rating standpoint, from a performance standpoint, it just would make more sense. The uh, ME262 is the actual first chat that you should get that teaches you a lot of good habits. It's a good chat by itself, but overall I think the problem with to come back to the ME163B0 is the bat rating of 8.3. It faces nothing but up tiers. Always make 15 bins, bisses, um, make 17s, sabers, hunters, and it just can actually not really perform up there. It's the same problem as with so many other 8.0 chats, 8.3 chats. It's one of the few in the game. And this is so frustrating. This is, it's a beautiful plane. Now let's have a look at the upgrades because this is a bit interesting. And this is, um, you have um, by default, 220 millimeters with 240 rounds, so 120 per gun. And if you get this, um, you know, additional, gun pods of two, you have four 20 millimeters with 400 rounds, much like with the I-225, but they hit harder. Although I got a lot of sparks and non-damaging hits as well, this patch, also with good ping and good uh, or no packet loss at all. This gun pod is for free. What? Something for free for an high tier aircraft in War Thunder? What is that? What is that? Yeah, the, the gun pods are for free. And to maximize your firepower, if you get the a chance of getting your guns on target in the first place, to maximize your burst firing power is just 
in my opinion the way to go with this as well as you actually can fire just the first two 20 millimeters and if you're empty, empty of those you can use the other pair of 20 millimeters and this is why the why this gun pods are actually very viable they can extend your firing power and your firing and duration so both aspects can be endured if you use it right but that leads obviously to the old known problem of the fuel and it's a very good glider but i stopped talking here about the plane because now let's go into some battle and let's see what is what so there we are starting right away and we got an air start with this plane you get an air start after landing and repairing you also get an air start that helps you a lot starting with around 600 kilometers an hour and um, i just go straight in i was so frustrated i thought to myself well screw it let's just go in and let's see what's come of it and uh, yeah the problem as you can see is that we have not a lot of fuel um we are already below six minutes and that is not a lot of time especially on large maps where you have to invest a lot of flight time you just don't have that much time left to fight and also return to base especially against the 9.0 jets you need your full engine performance and while the me163 has an incredible engine a rocket engine in fact i think it just um, doesn't has the it just can't sustain the full power output i know i know usually you just climb high and then use it as a glider where it's really really good but at the same time those gliding um, properties come at the price because at landing this plane sucks we will actually see this in this battle as well it just sucks it won't stop there are no brakes there are just uh, landing skids and they won't break they just even with the landing flaps and every possibility you actually have to ram one of your wings into the ground and hope to actually not crash then um, into a building while leaning to one side and just making a slow turn so here i can already see the first black dots and without fear without respect i just go head on to them and um, we see that either they don't see me or they ignore me nobody wants to properly go into a head-on versus this plane now the man shells i have to say i think the damage output of them was reduced again but it was not really the case when i played my um, d13 although i noticed also a slight drop so we get here the hunter and um yeah nice hit no damage nothing Oh, Napalm, you're a fool. Why are you using air targets if you also could use the stealth belt? Yada, yada, yada. So I use it them in full burst manner. And um, yeah, the hunter successfully dodged. I'm quite sure that I could have punished him much better if I had his bonus or 50 cals, M2, M3s, it doesn't really matter, because they actually do more damage. And that was really a bit of a bad um, response. So I didn't react in time. And again, we just go through. And then there is this Venom. And I think to myself, ah, I can kill him. Let's see how it works out. Um, okay. Didn't hit him. Now the problem with turning is also that, that you must not rip the wings of those. Um, yeah. Kraft Eye, as it is called in German, Power Egg. And I think that's a very good description of how the plane looks. But look at this. I can turn in and blam. But I also needed a full salvo to actually deal the damage that he actually exploded. It's like, like you have to overcome a certain health pool and then the plane takes damage. Which is a bit weird. And again the hunter just manages to sail through our spread. And um, yeah I don't have that much ammunition left. But it's still there and you know with this aircraft i'm constantly avoiding and dodging and weaving and i think for me personally with such a jet i can do this properly for myself if i would be on an even playing field but remember that my pilot doesn't have a g-suit remember that my fuel consumption is rather high and i just have just uh yeah six minutes and there again i just cannot aim for shit today 
The 20 millimeters, while having a, ma a higher muscle velocity than the 30 millimeters, I think they are not really suited for a jet fight. Everybody that flies the Heinkel 162 uh, or also the Arados, if the enemy is not straight ahead of you, you just have so much damn difficulties getting the guns on target. So now I actually want to go back to the airfield and um, let's see how this goes. So and just when I wanted to land I looked behind me and I also saw then that there were some uh, planes behind me. A Hunter and an F-86. I have no ammunition left so it's now my task to actually help that jet that is fighting both the CL-13 to actually make some fake attacks on the Hunter or the F-86 that forces them to roll out of the way, abort their attack and so I think this is my task. But the Hunter seems to have a smoke trail. I could have had him here probably if I had even a few shots left. But he goes in a straight line and um, directly towards our airfield. Which, surprise surprise, results in him dying. The other one seemed to also have been gone. I don't know. And there are three planes left. So the interesting part comes now. This is now me landing. And you can see I have the landing flaps and I already deaccelerated quite a lot before actually doing the touchdown, I now lean on one wing uh, on purpose. I tried to now switch it to the other wing, but now the wing seems to be glued to the aircraft. Now I want to actually drift in, but of course I rammed a tent and this is a tent built for Wacken, I guess, as it rips off my wing. And look, the plane just won't stop. It glides even into the other one and the tent actually breaks it. So, and now we are freshly repaired. Some of the other jets also have returned to the airfield and off we go. So, there is a Voltour coming in and that's the 2A. I'm not quite sure if that's the one with the 30mm. So we roll a bit out of the way. He cannot get guns on him, but I can get guns on him. And so I saved the guys on the airfield seemingly. MiG-15, does it survive? Yes, the MiG-15 survived. I did not quite see if he was there or not. So, second kill right off the airfield. That's the massive advantage of the ME-163. It just has this incredible power output, this burst power, this... Well, it's, it's basically a rocket. What try even to describe a rocket? <laughs> and then there is the F-86A. Now, the funny thing is, initially you think, well, he came with so much energy out of the clouds and uh, just did a boom and zoom attack and now tries to vanish into the clouds. The thing is, he is now in a climb rate battle with an ME-163. One of the few aircraft you don't do this against. <laughs> and you can see, I'm catching him, I'm catching him. He's forced to go into a turn and the question is, can I actually see him into the clouds? Where is the trail? Everything is white and just blinds me. But according to the sound, he must be still right in front of me and there he is. Just a moment later, I can barely see now the engine flame that gives me uh, some sort of orientation. There he is. Come on. Another not hitting, not damaging hit. And there he explodes. Beautiful. Just beautiful. Third kill. One enemy left. That's an FJ-4B. So, um, trying to grind the rockets, I guess, to ruin tankers games. Wow, that was close. And there you can see I have problems actually turning at all. At this speed, 800, uh, the plane is really fast actually. To actually make the turn properly. So he already has killed two planes. And there he goes. And I aim my head and... Oh, that was satisfying. That was really satisfying. And now just racing through the cloud cover into the blue sky because, yeah, that's it. You know, when you have a battle like this, you kind of understand why people play chats from time to time. Because it can be amazing. If you put aside all the frustration, there is a selling point to chats. 
Sadly, this happens relatively rarely and I think overall the issues are still a bit too much. But I digress, let's have a quick look at the post battle results. And there we go, for 4 kills and 1 critical hit, we got nearly 80,000 silver lines and 6,378 research points. So that's quite a lot of silver lines without a booster, without a wager, without an order, without anything. And so that's it for me today. So thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Let me know in the comment section what you think about this plan. Give this video a like. If you did, subscribe if you want to see more. And we'll see each other in the skies of War Thunder.